thank you so much. Mr. Asumika said he was looking forward to hearing more from Lillian. And I think it's important that she speaks before the guest of honor does. At this point, allow me to welcome her to the speech. Good evening. Thank you so much. It's an honor that uh, you made time out of your busy schedule to be here. And uh, town clerk, thank you so much for your time. Keep waiting for some honors. Everyone who's here, thank you so much. Now, he did pose uh, a number of questions. And you know, the, the entire week, I've been thinking about what you will say, should I write your speech. Even this morning, I was thinking about it. Then you got a call from memory. And, uh, whew, sorry. <laughs> she said, speak from your heart. Because then it will mean something. Pardon me if I'm getting on <laughs> I think, I feel like it's important before I speak about what motivated me to write this book. I want to, you know, people know this video. I'm sorry, you know. Sorry, People know this video. The Lillian, who's a journalist, by the way, I'm a journalist. I work for YRFM. I'm also a TV president for ZNBC, Horizon. And uh, this is my second book. My, my, my first book is titled the effects of divorce on children. You look lovely. You love you. <laughs> um, my parents divorced when I was nine. We love you. And I was um, taken to my grandparents in Nyengwe. If you know my society, Nyengwe Chief from Kambo, when I was nine until when I was about 12, after I attained my grade 7, and that's when I moved. And that experience exposed me to a lot of things. When I moved from my grandparents' house, I went to my, um, my father's sister, Mansa. And I was meant to stay there for a long time, but uh, on a particular night, uh, I must have been 13. And one of my cousins, he must have been in his 20s, entered my room. So, you know, I walked up to my aunt in the morning. Uh, uh, fortunately, he wanted to, my cousin woke up. So she kind of just, you know. And in the morning when I told my aunt, it was easy for her to believe because her daughter had to witness what was about to happen. And my aunt was like, you know what, you have to leave, go. And uh, it was hard. Long story short, at the age of 23, I just turned 25 yesterday, at the age of 23, I was forced to put in a little more work. Because my younger sister, who was my immediate sister, had passed at the 12, but she was forced to stay home for a long time without enrolling into the university due to lack of funds because after my parents divorced, my father was just, I don't know if you ask me where he is right now, I can't give you an answer. So for a long time, I felt I should have been born in another family. I should have been, I always felt the need to fit in, to be part of the elite groups in schools. To some extent, you saw in the book, I was the girl that was an errand girl because, okay, for me to be accepted, let me just do what they want me to do because I wanted to fit in. And I remember when I was 17, I made a glass of cement and I wanted to drink it because I thought, you know what, it's pointless. It's not making sense anymore. And in that moment, I think that was the first time I ever had an encounter with God. 
and uh, I was crying and I saw myself walking in a very dark room and there was a hand that was calling me and in that moment I said, you know what? I need to accept the things that I've been through. Maybe God allowed me to go through these things so that other people can learn. Maybe I should be the encouragement to someone else who's going through something else. I always felt lost in the midst of people every time I tried to fit in. And the moment I said, you know what, this is who I am, this is what God had for me, and I think he has a purpose for me, and I'm going to allow him to help me walk through the purpose that he has for me. I embraced the scars, I forgave my parents, I forgave everyone that did, any, that did anything to me. And that's when I really became the video that you see now. Wow. Each and every one of us has gone through something that they would never want to talk about. We've been exposed to situations that made us think, maybe, maybe if I was a president's daughter, <laughs> just maybe if I was born in America, I shouldn't have been born in Zambia. Maybe I should have, you know? But you know what? God created each and every one of us for a purpose. And it's not a mistake that you have gone through everything that you've gone through. And I want to tell you that there is power when you accept you. There are a lot of abilities that you possess that people are mine. But you won't know those abilities unless you accept you for you. You love you, your scars, your flaws, everything that makes up you. Because only when you embrace yourself will you stand in front of people and people will embrace you. So I hope and I pray that after you read this book, it will take you on a self-discovery journey and you will learn to love even the things that you think are ugly about yourself. Because believe me, if you think your nose is ugly, someone is thinking your nose is beautiful because their forehead is, big, is as big as mine. <laughs> so I just want to encourage each and everyone. And in the, you know, in the world of social media, we are all just, especially youths, who are thinking, oh, memories in Osaka, she makes a PS. She's doing things that she could be memory. But do you know memory's story? Do you know what it took for her to be where she is? You're thinking, maybe you want to be like Love More, wait for down on TV or the camera. Do you know what Love More has gone to? So before you admire the next person, admire the things in you, the things that you've gone through. Get to the point of embracing yourself, loving yourself. Even your ugly toes, look at them and like, they are nice. <laughs> because when you accept you, I'm telling you, Confidence will be your thing. You walk in a room and you won't be scared because you know who you are. Even if someone points out your flaw, it won't bother you because you are aware of it and you've decided to embrace it and to love yourself for it. Come on. So my prayer is that especially for youths, let's love us. Don't wish to be anyone else. Be inspired, but don't wish to be anyone else because you are on this earth for a purpose. So I, I hope uh, that has answered what the book is all about. But uh, P.S. Memory did touch on some of the challenges that we authors face. And I couldn't agree with her more. I feel like the writing industry has been neglected, if I can use that term. We've seen the government come through for musicians, filmmakers, We've seen associations, the Association of Musicians, and recently we even saw the president officiate at a film uh, launch, a movie launch, something. And it's an honor that you're here. Much appreciated, it's not taken for granted. But I think government, even as this year, government is looking to call for applications or empowerment, youth empowerment. I think it's important, now it's time that government should also now take keep interest in the writing industry because it's right, it's growing. And the biggest challenge is that we have to sell ourselves. There's no platform where I can easily walk to and say, you know what, I'm an author, these are my books, can government help me? It's hard. 
So if there's a way that government can come up with policies and incentives to help the writing industry grow, it will be appreciated. And I, I hope uh, at the end of the launch, we'll see PS buy a copy at 100,000. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I appreciate you being here.